the benefits of an advisory board. Let's start by a study done by Oracle Corporation. So what Oracle did, they took all of the customers that are members of advisory boards, different advisory boards, technical, strategic, customer satisfaction, and they compare them to the representative sample of customers that are not in advisory boards, right? So you take two groups, those that are in advisory boards and similar customers in terms of revenue size and mix and, um, and importance to Oracle, and you compare both populations. And here's the results of the Oracle survey. Those members that participated in the Oracle advisory boards, their rate of purchasing was up by 18% compared to the other group. So they bought at a rate of 18% higher than the other representative group of customers. This is not one advisory board. These are 400 members in advisory boards. So statistically, uh, talking, it's not 15 or 20 people, it's 400. So, um, but but you, you have a point. I mean, the organization is focused on these members. So 18% um, higher purchasing rate. And by the way, you can use these figures for your own executives uh, if you're trying to justify the ROI of advisory boards. Uh, willing to recommend Oracle, that rate jumped up by 24%. And overall satisfaction rating with Oracle was up 25%, these are big numbers, right? Up 25% from the other representative sample of customers. I mean, this is just you know, a, a study that was done when you take the customers that were part of advisory boards, successful advisory boards, and you compare it to the rest of the customer base. Uh, but you can't really isolate all of the factors. So this, what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna give you different data points, different surveys, and then we'll, we'll share with you about um, some information about metrics and ROI. So any survey that you do has some flaws and, and you, know, you can look at it and say, well, they already get a lot of love from the corporation. However, there are advisory boards. Oracle is doing a great job with their advisory boards. There are advisory boards that companies have that I bet you that if you run the numbers, they're not gonna be the same numbers. So a lot of it has to do with, is that a successful advisory board? If I'm looking at the uh, survey that we've done at Ignite. Uh, this one was done in October 2014, 75 companies. The number one thing, number one benefit that companies that responded to the survey said that they created advisory boards in order to get input on the strategic or business direction. That was the number one reason, 77%. Next one was product direction, 63% for the product direction. And then you can see there are a lot of other reasons why companies create advisory boards and what are the benefits. Uh, understand buying influences and behaviors, 50%. And again, it's multiple, multiple uh, answers, so you can get, it doesn't add up to 100%. Uh, branding and positioning insight. Market sensing, identifying new markets, so market intelligence, competitive intelligence. Increased customer loyalty, and it goes down the line. So, Different, different reasons, but the main ones are strategic direction, input on product strategy, and then you can probably lump it around marketing in terms of all the other benefits. Uh, this is another slide that we have here. That's on page three of the manual. And what we've done here is taking some functional areas within your business and quantify. If you see numbers, these are some real numbers from uh, some of our customers. Obviously, we're not gonna have their names here, but these are real numbers from some of our customers. So when you look at strategy, right, and you, let's say you set up a strategic board, what is the expected benefit or typical result from a, a successful strategic board? In this case, it would be validation of thinking. Just validating the thinking, that's immensely valuable to validate the thinking of the existing executive team. So we call that internal alignment within your own executive team. I don't know about you, but any company that I worked with and for in the past, when you talk to executives, they all have different perspectives of where the business should go, how it should move forward, what do you need to do, and so on and so forth. If you are able to convene a group of strategic customers and you're able to create a framework that will actually validate or invalidate some of that thinking, 
This is huge because you get your top customers pretty much creating internal alignment within your own executive team. So we believe in creating an overarching theme for the advisory board and each meeting can have a sub theme that will collapse back to the overarching theme. And we'll provide specific examples when we talk about the design of the board. But having a strong, compelling theme is essential to a successful meeting. So you can see some of the um, benefits and results around marketing, right? Around branding and positioning, revised positioning, uh, creating new value propositions with the help of the advisory board members, optimizing market spend and mix. Some of our clients open up the marketing budget, open up the marketing plan. Has to be with a strategic board. And they actually ask, what would you do? And then you, you, know, you can have a, a full day session where the customers get to actually act as your chief marketing officers around your marketing spend and marketing priorities. Obviously, there's a strong relationship between advisory board membership and references. We'll talk about that as well. Thought leadership. We'll share with you many examples of what you can do in terms of thought leadership with the advisory board members. Okay? Uh, products and solutions. Some of the things that you can do in terms of validation, in terms of faster rollouts. Um, customer satisfaction, increase in retention. And then sales. It's very important. Usually, that's the first thing that many executives look for. Show me the impact on sales. Well, the impact on sales needs to come after you build a relationship, but there is a strong impact on sales in terms of selling more to existing accounts, using the existing advisory board members to actually sell to other accounts as well, doing cross-selling and upselling opportunities. This is an article that um, we published in CIO Insight, page four of the manual, and it actually talks about why members join an advisory board. If you had to distill it down to three things, they join to influence the strategic direction of your company. They join to not only network, but to benchmark. People think about, oh, they're coming to network. They don't, networking is important. Benchmarking is more important. For them to go back to their organizations and say, hey, I was in the room with 15 companies in my market, and here's what they do on A, B, C, D, and E. That's huge. And if you can provide a platform for them to have that type of data and input and taking back to their companies, you're doing a very good thing with the advisory board. Many times companies do not allow that to happen because that needs to be structured. That ability for them to benchmark against each other doesn't just happen from a one or two minute conversation. It's usually built in into the agenda and you dedicate significant time to it. So you can see the um, benefits here, a lot of it has to do with their own personal benefits for joining the boards. Another uh, survey, this one was done in 2010, just sharing with you different surveys that we've done with 50 companies. Pretty similar, 84% said uh, input on corporate strategy and achieving business goals. And then you had product direction and everything else that we talked about before. Um, this is what the members are looking for, and we shared it, a voice in the strategic direction of the company, access to senior leadership, and benchmarking and networking.